Well, the, the purpose of this is to create an artificial stream. So this is a system where this is an artificial stream, which I've turned off right now. We were talking about um, when water lands on a piece of ground, some of it. Yeah, some of it, some of it runs off and some of it gets like, infiltrated. Infiltrated, good. But in a pond system, what are, what are some of the things that you would want to measure? Oxygen, carbon dioxide. Oxygen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. So we can measure uh, dissolved oxygen, and that's the oxygen that is dissolved into the water. Uh, we'll take the pH. So 7.6 milligrams per liter. So that's dissolved oxygen. pH. Also, it's kind of neutral, more to the side. More to the base side. More to the base side. Yeah. And the, at temperature 20 degrees. What do you think will happen when I turn the stream back on? Dissolved oxygen is going to change. It's going to be higher. So, oh, so what happens? If you look from the side, what, what happens is the water's running in there? Bubbles. Yeah. So it's pushing those bubbles down underneath the, the surface, and that increases the surface area in the mixing and allows the uh, oxygen to be dissolved in the water. Well, We'll let this run for a little bit and we'll come back and do it. We're going to sample in these two other systems. If that's a stream running into a pond over there, what would this be like out, outside? Puddle. Puddle. And what do you notice about the bottom of this? It's gross. <laughs> it's gross? <laughs> okay, so what can change the oxygen level in an aquatic system? The, the species. Stream the species. Okay, well, so is, is the salamander getting oxygen out of the water? Is it breathing it? No. No, no it's breathing atmospheric air. What else can affect the amount of dissolved oxygen? Those plants in there? Okay, so if there's algae and there's light, then what would that do to the oxygen level? And if there's algae that's photosynthesizing in the water, it'll increase because it's producing oxygen. At night, what happens? It'll decrease because there's no sunlight, so they can't photosynthesize. Okay. What about bacteria? Bacteria photosynthesize as well. No. Some, but most. Right. So uh, there's biological oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen that can get used in an aquatic system by decomposers, and in some systems that can use up a significant amount. Let's take one more reading. So that is uh, a tank that has crayfish in it. And there are two crayfish left out of 10. They've uh, just consumed each other. Crayfish, crayfish in this area are uh, an invasive species. So wouldn't want to return them to, to any body of water. So they've been in here. And when, when crayfish molt for the first hour or so, their shells are quite soft and crayfish are predatory. And so they eat each other. They do. <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll let this stabilize, and we'll see. What do you think the biological oxygen demand would be in? Would it be higher in this one than this? I don't know no, because no. if it's decomposing, it's gonna take up more oxygen, so it should right. be less. Well, the demand is higher, right? Yeah. Which means there's less oxygen. So High biological right. oxygen demand demand means it's the living systems are using more oxygen. What, what, yeah. is it, what does it have to use to break stuff down? Oxygen, oxygen. or carbon dioxide? Oxygen. Oxygen, right? So it's going to decrease. Yeah, so it should. And so there, there are aquatic systems. For example, if a system is downstream from a feedlot and there's a lot of waste going into the water, it's so nutrient rich that the, the bacteria population multiplying every 20 minutes, right? The population explodes and all of them are using oxygen and it can cause um, a situation where there's no dissolved oxygen in, in the water and that's when the fish belly up. So we'll see, um, that's, what was that called? Biological oxygen demand. Yeah. BOD, biological oxygen demand. So, what, so is that what happens, like, for example, in lakes or in rivers when you see fish just... They can be one cold reason. Cold yep. Can that be, could be another reason. It can, yes, when they're belly up in the river, that can be, that can be the reason. What are we, what are we getting there? 2.91.
Higher demand, less oxygen. Higher demand, less oxygen. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and take your samples right at this point where there's an inflow and you can see that the, the bubbles are mixing in. Oh, let's let it stabilize a little bit. And it may be with this volume of water and the mist that it's uh, not going to change significantly. All right, so come on up here. So tell me what, tell me what this shows you versus sweat. Versus temperature, and what kind of relationship? What happens as the temperature changes? What happens? The higher the temperature, the less dissolved oxygen. Okay. If you do this with a ruler, what would be theoretical level of dissolved oxygen? If it was just the, the temperature of the water, then the maximum solubility would be 9. And as the temperature gets lower, what happens to the uh, solubility of oxygen? It goes up. It goes up. So when you go trout fishing, what do you think is true about trout's need for dissolved oxygen? It's so high. It's high, yeah. right? Because it's really cold. Right. Well, the, the trout uh, live in cold water and they have very high oxygen demand, whereas um, bass and sunfish, catfish, um, can live in much warmer water. This gives you what the theoretical is, but then to account for... Bacteria, other species... Right, and all those things, all those demands of oxygen in the water are called what? BOD. BOD. It's like a lot of things that we've talked about where everything has an optimum range and then there's an absolute range of tolerance where below that level they, they die or above the, the maximum condition they, they die, and then there's an optimum. And so all living things are like that.